Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, keeping it free. Blogspot.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, people know since I posted uh, some crypto videos more than a year ago that I've been in crypto for a very long time. I've experienced quite a bit in crypto. I've even had some coins disappear from an online uh, trading post, right? Online exchange. So I've seen some good and some bad. Um, people stop me from time to time and they want to know some things to consider before buying a cryptocurrency. What are some of the things no one talks about that you need to consider? Right? Well, first, let me point out that when you buy a coin, have some place to put it. Don't leave it on an online exchange. Right? That makes you vulnerable to people hacking the online exchange. It also makes you vulnerable to a governmental entity seizing an online exchange. Right? You want to do your transaction and you want to be able to have the coin in your own digital wallet. So before you buy a coin, my recommendation is that you research the wallets. Figure out how after you buy the coin on the exchange you can actually move the coin to your own wallet, right? Also consider companies like Shapeshift, right? You want to Google these companies, you want to figure them out that allow you to exchange one cryptocurrency for another without using an online exchange. So before you buy a crypto, just think about how you're going to keep the crypto. Right? Think about how you're going to deal with an online exchange. My recommendation is simply when you make the transaction and you've bought the Bitcoin, I don't care how reputable the online exchange can be. It could be Coinbase, which is highly thought of. I have an account on Coinbase. You want to then be able to withdraw that Bitcoin and deposit it in your own wallet. You need to think about security up front, right? Don't buy the coin without the end game of transporting it to your own wallet. That's the first thing. The second thing is to understand you need to think about the governance of the cryptocurrency you're buying. Right now, my favorite cryptocurrency is Dash. I encourage you to Google Dash's governance online and consider that really the model of how things should be. You want people with skin in the game making the decisions on the cryptocurrency's future, right? There are things to think about like block size and stuff like that. You don't want, in my opinion, situations like what's happening right now in Bitcoin where they can't agree upon the size of the block size, right? Where the fees have gotten high and transactions are backing up in the system. And there doesn't seem to be a, government, a governance protocol to quickly resolve the differences of opinion among Bitcoin holders, right? You also want, since you're buying a decentralized currency, the governance to be somewhat decentralized, right? I don't want a cryptocurrency that has one person or two people or some curtain where I can't see behind the curtain on how the decisions are being made for the cryptocurrency's future. So I own some Monero. I have to tell you, I have a problem with Monero's governance structure. To me, Fluffy Pony has too much power, right? What I like with Dash is that if you own more than a thousand Dash, if you operate a master node, you actually have an opportunity to vote on proposals made to the cryptocurrency 
And of course, there's a protocol by which third parties, whether they own Dash or not, right, can actually submit proposals to the cryptocurrency that people vote on. So folks with skin in the game actually get an opportunity to vote on proposals and developers with ideas get a chance to submit them to the cryptocurrency. Now I don't like everyone having a vote, right? Because I don't want the person who just bought the cryptocurrency five minutes ago, right? And who has very little of it with no intention of keeping it to have an opportunity to sit down and vote on the future of the cryptocurrency. So, while I have a little bit in Privix, right, or Pivx, P-I-V-X, which is a fork off the Dash blockchain, I don't like the discussion there about everyone having a vote for the future of the cryptocurrency, right? Cryptocurrency is evolving I believe you want folks with skin in the game, but a decent number of them having an opportunity to vote on proposals. Understand you have more than 4,000 Dash Master nodes as I make this video, right? That's the kind of governance I like. I don't like the situation with Bitcoin where, you know, the performance of the cryptocurrency starts to suffer. Your transactions stay in limbo for too long. I want instant transactions, right? And I don't want there to be months of discussion on how to resolve an obvious problem, right? Another thing you need to think about is privacy. Now, understand that many of these cryptocurrencies offer no privacy whatsoever. In other words, their blockchain is an open ledger that someone can track the transactions on, right? They can track the addresses and say, okay, this transaction was for this amount. It went from this address to that address. Maybe they don't know your name, but you and I know hackers over time can figure that out. I don't want someone figuring out my Bitcoin address and then figuring out my transactions going back several months, right? Or the addresses of the people to whom I've sent Bitcoin, right? Let me also point out too, I don't mean to be too negative on Bitcoin. I myself own some Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin certainly has first mover status. I would say it's probably the most best known cryptocurrency, right? But just be aware that Bitcoin doesn't offer a lot of privacy, nor does Litecoin, right? And these are two of the most popular cryptocurrencies. Now, if you're looking for privacy, right? Dash is good. They'll mix up the transactions so someone can't really tell how much you sent in the transaction. But Dash doesn't have the advanced privacy features of Zcash, right? Zcash, if you're looking for privacy, Right now, Zcash is king, as is the forked Zencash, right? You also have Z Classic. Let me just point out, Zencash is interesting because it's a fork with a better governance structure than Zcash, right? The Zcash line of coins features zero proof protocol. In other words, a third party can't tell how much was in the transaction or even who sent it or who received it. Right now, that technology is out there today. This is more than the coin mixing offered by Dash, right? And Dash, quite frankly, is a big step up, in my opinion, in terms of privacy from Bitcoin, Litecoin, right? 
Let me also point out too that if your goal is privacy, Monero is also in the conversation. Monero gives you privacy. Right? So uh, let me point out though that Monero brings me to the next point. The ease of use of the wallet. I can tell you a Dash wallet is easy to use. Right? Since PIVX is an offshoot of Dash, PIVX is easy to use. Right? I face challenges using Monero. Right? You want to talk to people, you want to Google the ease of use of the wallet if you plan to actually use the cryptocurrency to transact transactions. Right? If you're just using it as a store of value and you just want to get some of the cryptocurrency and don't plan to send it to individual addresses and stuff like that, then that's one thing. But if you plan to actually use the cryptocurrency for commercial transactions, you want an easy to use wallet. In my opinion, you want quick instant transactions and if, like me, you value your privacy, you want some level of privacy, right? If that's true, then I think Dash, I think Zcash, I think uh, Zen Classic, um, those are the ones you want to think about. Let me also point out, too, that some of these cryptos are so new, they don't even have a good set of established wallets right now. Right, so Zen Cash, the wallet situation is a bit murky right now. You should know that before you buy the cryptocurrency. Another thing you want to consider is the level of concentration for any aspect of the cryptocurrency. You're buying a decentralized cryptocurrency, so you don't want there to be any part of the cryptocurrency that hints at centralization where some group could get together and sink the cryptocurrency. Now Litecoin, I like Litecoin, full disclosure I own some Litecoin, but understand that there is a mining pool, F2 pool, that actually is involved in mining more than 50% of Litecoin right now, right? Things like that you need to keep an eye on. You need to consider before you buy the cryptocurrency, right? To me, a best case is that there's no one player who's close to 50% in terms of ownership of a cryptocurrency or in terms of mining the cryptocurrency. Another thing to consider are the transaction fees. You want a cryptocurrency with cheap transaction fees. This way, customers using the cryptocurrency get a bargain, right? You want them to get a bargain. You want ease of use of the cryptocurrency. Now, in the world of cryptocurrency, right now, Bitcoin has very high fees relative to the other cryptos. That's going to hinder Bitcoin somewhat going forward until that situation is resolved, right? Just be aware and cognizant of the transaction fees involved in the cryptocurrency you plan to buy, right? Another thing you need to consider is the number of coins, not just today, but the number that's possible. Because in my opinion, one man's opinion, in my opinion, if your cryptocurrency doesn't have a cap, doesn't have a limit, on its supply. If that supply could be unlimited, then in my opinion, the cryptocurrency is worthless. Right? So, coins, popular coins like Dogecoin, I don't understand. Why would you want to buy into a cryptocurrency that can just continually print and print and print? Seems to me like you'd be buying into a fiat currency. I thought crypto was supposed to be a safe haven, a hedge on fiat currencies. So, what I like with Bitcoin, what I like with Dash, what I like with Litecoin, 
Um, what I like with Zcash is the fact that they all have limits, right? You can buy the cryptocurrency knowing that only a certain number of that cryptocurrency is going to be minted, right? That's something to consider. Another thing you want to consider too is the transaction speed. Ideally, you want things that can be processed in an instant, like cash, right? You're sending money electronically. You don't want a situation where you send the money and then the other person's still waiting to receive it. Fifteen minutes later, they're still waiting to receive it, right? That defeats the electronic nature of the money, right? That's the problem you have right now with Bitcoin. You want to look at the transaction times on the cryptocurrency you're using, right? Another thing you want to consider is the price you're paying for the features you're getting. One of the strategies I use in buying cryptocurrency is to buy off brands, just like if I'm at Costco and they have that Kirkland brand, I say, hey, this is a little bit cheaper than everything else. Now, I know Ethereum has been going like gangbusters. And I understand Ethereum, right, has smart contract capability. But you're paying a premium for Ethereum, aren't you? And as the markets mature, people are going to start to ask the question, is there another cryptocurrency with smart contract capability like Ethereum that's cheaper? And the answer is, yes, there is. Understand, there's Ethereum Classic. Consider it an off-brand, right? It's split off from Ethereum, the blockchain. They're all part of the same blockchain. And Ethereum Classic with smart contract capability. With the capability of Ethereum, right, is much cheaper. I think it has huge upside. Right? I mentioned that Pivx split off from Dash. There are some differences between Dash and Pivx. Right? Um, the governance isn't quite the same with Pivx. Pivx is actually trying to develop the zero-proof protocol of Zcash. Okay, great. But both of them do offer you private and instant transactions. Both of them have very easy-to-use wallets. Right? If Dash is a little bit too expensive for you, right? Pivx might be a coin to consider, right? Likewise, you have Zcash, zero proof protocol. You have Zencash, zero proof protocol. That is a fork off the Zcash blockchain. You also have Zclassic, right? So if I'm looking for a privacy-centered cryptocurrency using the zero proof protocol and I don't want to pay the big price that comes with Zcash right maybe I should consider Zencash or Z Classic or Z coin right let's get back to Z coin right here too right another thing to consider is the size of the blockchain because if you're going to download the blockchain onto your computer, right, if you're going to download a wallet that's going to take time to read the history of the coin, right, so it's up to date. Understand some coins are streamlined in terms of their blockchain relative to other coins. So, Zcoin has the zero proof protocol, but, but, Right? The blockchain is much bigger. 
consumes much more memory than the blockchain for let's say Zcash. You need to think about that because it affects your ability to quickly get a wallet up and running and then to transact from that wallet. Right? Understand that Zcash too is newer technology than Zcoin. Right? So those are the issues that come to mind that I think people need to be aware of in buying a cryptocurrency. Let me also say too, you want to find out how much that cryptocurrency is actually used. So I would encourage you to become very familiar with the website coinmarketcap.com. They'll actually tell you the volume, the transaction volume for each coin over a 24 hour period, the last 24 hours. Right? In my opinion, a coin's value is directly related to how much it's used. If you see a coin with a very high transaction volume relative to other coins that's reasonably priced, you want to consider jumping in, right? I can tell you with Ethereum, it was interesting. You notice that as Ethereum was rising through the ranks, it was being heavily used by the public, right? Price follows utility. If your coin is heavily used by the public, if there's mass adoption of your coin, it's likely to appreciate in price and deliver profits to you. Let me close by saying, don't be intimidated by the prices of the coins. They're a little bit arbitrary, right? Understand different cryptocurrencies have a different number of coins in the market. It's not standardized. So you can't look at the coins and assume that they represent the same percentage of the coins market cap. Let me also point out too, that you're in the world of crypto. So you don't have to buy a coin, right? Coin's just a term of art. You can buy a fraction of a coin, right? This is different than buying stock. Rather than me saying, okay, let me buy a share of Amazon and spend $1,000 doing so. In the world of crypto, you can say, you know what? Let me buy a position in Zcash, right? Rather than spend the 300 plus dollars for a coin, I can say, you know what? Let me just spend the $30 I have in my wallet, right? On a portion of a coin, have it in my portfolio, right? Have a little wallet online that'll enable me to track how that $30 grows or decreases. Right? That'll give me an opportunity to do some transactions with the $30 to see if it's a good user experience, one that might ramp up, become a store of value, or be very useful as a means of exchange in a transaction. Right? So don't be intimidated when you see Ethereum up over $300 a coin. Right? That shouldn't stop you from saying, you know what, let me get a taste of Ethereum, let me buy $30 worth of Ethereum and see how I like it. Kick the tires on the coin, so to speak. Right? Drive the coin around <laughs> the neighborhood a little bit. Right? You know, see who accepts the coin, actually learn what it feels like to own a portion of the coin. Right? You don't have to jump in the water all at once. You can dip your toe in See if, like, see if you like it, and then decide whether you want to go forward. Anyway, those are some of my thoughts. Let me know yours, right? Let's shine a light in this area, right? If you want to recommend a coin, if you want to take exception with any point I've raised, I imagine some Dogecoin people have some thoughts they want to express, I know they have in some past videos I've made, then I hope you leave that information 
in the comment section to this video. But let me be clear. I know cryptocurrencies have gone parabolic price-wise recently, right? And I know some people are using the B word, bubble, right? Just ask yourself, when PCs went parabolic at the beginning of the 1980s, was that a bubble or was that a recognition that personal computers were actually something that consumers wanted to use going forward, right? When the internet took off in the early 1990s, right? Netscape released, a lot of people flocking online. Was that a bubble? Or was that a new technology that satisfied many people's needs? Now, in this day and age of fiat currencies, right? Currencies that aren't backed by gold. Currencies that Central banks are creating out of thin air, right? Don't you think that cryptocurrencies might actually be a breakthrough technology? And I'm not someone who goes around for every fad and says, it's different this time. No, but here, isn't there a need, given how manipulated the gold and silver markets are, isn't there a need here for a hedge on fiat currencies? Isn't there also a need here for a hedge on central planning governments? Right? So, food for thought. If you, like me, believe that this is actually a technological breakthrough, the emergence of currency divorced from central banks, right? Uh, the ability to do transactions with much lower transaction costs than were done by, we'll call them legacy banks. If you feel this is a breakthrough, then understand this is not a bubble. Anyway, let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Um, full disclosure, I own some Bitcoin, I own some Litecoin, I own some Dash, I own some Ethereum, I own some Ethereum Classic, I own some uh, Zcash, uh, I own some Pivx. Many of the cryptos I've discussed here, I own, right? Full disclosure. Thanks for stopping by.